Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. Alright, so today we're going to be learning how to retouch your portrait and still keep everything looking natural. So we're going to work in on, on this image using our uh, retouching action pack, the one we've been giving out for some time now. So if you do not have access to our retouching pack, all you need to do is just to join our WhatsApp community and you'll be able to download the action and also use it on your own images. All right, so without wasting much of time, let's quickly get started. I'm going to collapse this and uh, go on top. Yeah, here it is. So the first thing I need to do in this image, of course, is to take care of the visible blemishes. So I'm just going to pick up my patch tool. And uh, before I do that, I need to make a duplicate for backup purposes. Just quickly run through it. So I'm going to be fast forwarding this part so the video doesn't get unnecessarily too long. All right, so we are done with these ones. The first thing, we, the next thing we need to do rather is to run our frequency separation. So if you look here, you'll see that we've been able to remove a whole lot of uh, blemishes from her face. So the rest will fix it using our frequency separation. So I'm going to match this up then quickly create a frequency separation action using the frequency separation gear. So I'm going to press play. So looking at the image, it's not quite a very detailed shot. So I'm going to be keeping it somewhere around four. Then I will look at it as well to see if it's going to allow us to take care of the blemishes. Yes, this is going to work perfectly. So I'll press OK. Open it up and pick up my mixer brush working on my low frequency. So I will not be working on the correcting tones. I'll just working on the low frequency so my setting remain 33 at my wetness and 31 at my flow i'm not touching my mix and my uh load not at all so there are two ways to this you can decide to hide your high frequency that is minimize it and just paint over your colors or you can decide to allow it to be open and still paint over your colors but if you're allowing it to be open just make sure that your sample or layers is turned off. So you have to turn it off. So whether you allow it to be open or whether you close it up, it's going to still look good. So I'll just quickly use my frequency suppression and go through the image. I'm using my mixer brush. So I believe by now you already understand the rule of frequency suppression, but in case you do not, it's very simple. Make sure you do not paint your highlights into your shadows and make sure you do not paint your shadows into your highlight. Now, that is the statutory law, the statutory rule of uh, frequency separation using your mixer brush too. But, of course, it has exceptions. There are cases where you might want to use some part of your highlight to fill up a particular shadow or use some part of your shadow to fill up a particular highlight. In that case, you are, of course, you are free to break the rule. It's just all about your creative style. What makes you feel good? All right, so paint over here as well. And over here, it's here in closely. Okay, so remember, I'm avoiding this particular shiny stuff on her face, the accessory on her face, so I don't end up messing it up. All right, so back to the cheek here. So basically what I'm doing is that I'm blending the areas that need to be blended. Then even out the areas that needs to be evened out. Of course, blend the two of them together to create a very seamless transition between the, hi the highlight and the shadow. Yeah, that's basically what we do while doing our frequency separation. Okay. So over here, I think I'm seeing some even tones here. Just going to even it out. Very good. So over the nose, yeah. 
All right. So I'm going to also clean this highlight. Print the shadow here. All right. I think we are good with the face. Then we'll straight away we'll move to the body. I'll just even these areas out. Okay, so I still protect the dimensionality on the skin. We'll come over to the neck area. All right, we'll come over to this area. Do the same thing. Okay, so let me open it up. So I have, we are just done. So I'm just opening up my high frequency to see exactly what we've created. So this is the before, this is the after. So we'll zoom in a little and make sure. Okay, so some of these tiny, tiny blemishes remaining here, we'll pick up our clone stamp tool and just quickly fix them using a very tiny clone stamp. Just take care of them. Sorry, I wasn't good at all. This one's over here. Just quickly give it a very quick fix. So I'm going to show you another technique that we can use to as well fix this thing and even make the whole image look softer. Yeah, I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm not so sure if this is going to work exactly this way. I've not done it before. But one of the ways you can do that is to right click on the on the low frequency and convert it to a smart object. So let's see if that works. Then I'll go to my filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian four. But I'm going to try to soften it out a little bit more. So keep it all around eight. Then press OK. Go down to the smart filters, press Ctrl I. Pick up our brush tool and just paint over the skin. Yeah, sure, that works. Okay, so just quickly soften out a little bit of the skin texture. To make things even more smoother. Do the same for the body. All right, so the next thing we are going to quickly do on the image is our dodging and burning very quickly. So I'm going to load up my dodge and burn action. So this is my dodge here. Load it up, this is my burn. I'll play the action. Of course, you can as well load up your dodge and burn check layer to be able to get a guideline on how you should paint over your image. So I'll paint, painting with a brush flow of four. So first of all, we'll be dodging. So when you're using this type of uh, check layer in your dodge and burn, this is more like an inverted view. So if it's inverted, that means the dark areas are the highlights and the bright areas are the shadows. So with that in mind, we're going to quickly paint over our highlights. So uh, your visual presentation is going to be looking darker. But at the end of the day, when you turn off your check layer, it's actually getting brighter. So the darker it's getting as you are painting, know that you are making that area very, very bright. Pause over the forehead. Close to your tap here. Push straight to this side. Got this part of the face as well. Yeah, the nose. Yes, of course. Right here. Maybe on the lips a little. Got that highlight on her neck. And that's the side light or the rim light. So I can turn off my frequency separation to see exactly how the light was flowing on the original image. So we'll mimic that same pattern. So even if there are areas we lost during frequency separation, this particular technique can allow you to get them back while doing your dodge and burn. Very good. So we'll quickly move over to our burn. So of course, if the dodge is the dark areas, then the burn is the bright areas. It's just that very simple. Got this one over here. About the eye. Okay, so we can now turn back our frequency separation and probably turn off our 
tech layer and this is what we have so i'm going to group these two into the same group this is the before this is the after this is the before this is the after so you see the way the dodge and bond brought back the dimensions back on see the way it was looking especially here before the dodge and burning and see the way it's looking now so we'll have our highlights and our shadows properly restored so having done that i'm going to delete the check layer and color grade my image a little and we are good to go so looking at the image i want it to have more like a magenta-ish very uh slight a slight touch of magenta but it's towards a dark tone so to achieve that i'm going to just quickly jump on my color balance of course the skin should be in the mid tones so we're in the mid tones and I want to put a little magenta to it, just like that slightly and reduce the reds as well. I think this is too much. Yeah. Add a little bit of yellows or rather let's move towards blues. So this is before, this is after, but we'll go to our selective color. Do the center over here. I think I like the warmness. Good. so finally we apply a cooling filter effect on it photo filter go to our photo filter go to cool apply it on it and we have the skin tone we want but the problem is that i want it just on the skin not even on the background so how do we do that we'll just group all of them into the same group and hide it then i'll make a selection of my object but after duplicating the background i'll just make a selection of my object Okay, so once that is done, right, click on your object and press select inverse. Make a duplicate of the background or rather just do it like that, right? Click on it and go to layer via cut. So we'll have our background on a different layer and our object on a different layer. So I'll have my object layer above my background. Then I'm going to make a duplicate of it and create a mask for it. Go to my select, go to color range. So I don't want to have her skin tone and that's what we're having here. Then I'll press OK. You can increase the fuzziness a little just spread it out press ok use the mask to just place it over the group you've created and you're going to have the color grid just on her skin tone yes of course this is looking too much so i'm going to go and tone it down beautiful Ooh, it still slightly too much all right we are good the before the after just a touch of it now looking at my background i want it to become gray i don't like the warm tones it has so i'm just going to create a cooling filter effect over it yeah like that if we have something cool all right so the last thing we are going to be doing is to apply our done for you retouch action over our image so I'm going to go to play, open up my done for you retouch action and just click it, play it over the object. Now you can leave, decide to leave your image like this, but I just like applying my done for you on my final result because it has a way of bringing everything I did together. So I'm going to keep it at the same fold, press enter. Whoa, it's done. Although this is too much. I'm going to definitely reduce it. So we'll have the before, the after, the before, the after. So you see the way it created more contrast on the image. But I don't like it on the whole image. I just want it on the skin. So I'm just going to create a mask for it. Pick up my brush. Just paint it over the skin. Just like that. Let's pick up my cuffs. Brighten her up a bit. So I'll pick up my hand tool. And just make the skin like brighter than it was and we are good to go so let me show you a very quick before and after of everything we have done so i'm going to go to my history create a snapshot then go all the way to the top so this is the image when we came into photoshop and this is the result we have now the before the after the before after thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe do turn on your notification bell to get notified every simple time you drop until then see you on the next one